Hey you guys, my name is David Gould. Uh, today I'm gonna be reading chapter eight of Nancy Farmer's book, The House of the Scorpion. Um, if you like my content here, please subscribe. 90% of the people that watch my content on my channel are not subscribers, so please uh, help me get to 110 subscribers. I would appreciate that. Uh, Alexa, thank you for um, Alexa. Thank you for uh, commenting. I appreciate that. Thanks for the feedback. I'm glad you're enjoying my content. And if you do enjoy this, uh, please uh, give me a like, thumbs up, comment. Chapter eight: The Egypt and the Dry Field. Matt was wildly excited. Not only what were they going, were they going on a picnic? but they would travel by horseback. Matt had seen horses from windows of the little house, and of course he'd uh, seen them on the TV. Cowboys and a big tough um, bandidos rode them. His favorite hero was El, Latito, El Latigo, the Black Whip. El Latigo was on TV every Saturday. He wore a black mask and rescued poor people from evil capitalists. His favorite a weapon was a long whip with which um, he could peel an apple while it was still on, on the tree. Matt was more than a little disappointed. When Tamlin uh, brought out a, a sleepy gray horse, instead of, instead of the, the spirited steed, El Latigo rode, be reasonable, lad, said the bodyguard, tightening the girths on the saddle. We're after reliability, not speed. El Patron wouldn't take it all well if you were dumped on your head. Once Matt was perched on the saddle in front of a Tam, he forgot all about his disappointment. He was riding. He was high in the air, swaying along with the smell of a horse all around him. He felt the coarse hair of the mane and pressed his ankles against the warm coat of the animal. I'm going to stop for just a minute. Um, when I was about 11 or 12 years old, my parents would send me away to summer camp for a week or two weeks. And I went to a camp in Arkansas and, they, and I had to do horseback riding um, every camp. Uh, my parents made me do that, but it was so much fun so much fun it's it can be dangerous um if you ever do horseback riding you might wear a helmet um you might you know but um but but if you've never done it you might consider doing it sometime um after those uh months without talking matt couldn't wait to catch up he chattered about everything he saw the blue sky the birds the flies buzzing around the horse's ears tim land didn't stop him he grunted occasionally to show he was listening and directed the horse along a dirt path. They plodded through the poppy fields and gradually moved away from the big house toward the, toward the gray brown hills that lay on the horizon. The first fields they encountered were covered with a, a mist of, of new leaves. Uh, they were, uh, these were seedlings. Matt had watched the growing cycle from the window of the little house and he, and he knew what to expect. The older plants were larger and rounder, like uh, small cabbages, and the leaves were tinged with blue. As they rode, the plants became larger until they were as high as the belly of the horse. Buds opened into uh, crinkled petals in, in, a, in a glory of white under uh, the hot sun. A flat, a flat, a faint perfume hung in the air. They came to the fields where the petals had fallen. These lay in, in, in drifts all over the ground while the seed pods they left behind stuck up like green thumbs. The pods had swelled until they were the size of hen's eggs and ready for harvest. Matt saw the first farm laborers. He'd observed them before, but Celia had warned him to hide from strangers, so he hadn't watched them closely. Now he saw that both men and women wore tan uniforms and wide straw hats. They walked slowly, bending down with their tiny knives to slash the pods. 
What are they? Why are they doing that? Matt asked. To release the opium, replied Tamlin. The, the sap oozes out and hardens overnight. In the morning, the workers scrape it off. They can collect from the same plant four or five times. On and on the horse plodded. The field shimmered with heat, and a sweet odor with, with something rotten at its core filled the air. The workers bent and slashed, bent and slashed in a hypnotic rhythm. They didn't speak. They didn't even wipe the sweat off their faces. Don't they get tired? Matt asked. Oh, they do, said Tamlin. At last the horses came to a deserted field. The plants were beginning to dry. A, a hot breeze rattled the leaves. Look, there's a man lying on the ground, cried Matt. Tamlin halted the horse and got down. Stay, he ordered the animal. Matt clung tightly to the mane. He didn't feel at all safe so far off the ground. Tamlin strode over to the man, bent down, and felt his neck. He shook his head and returned. Can't we... can't we help him? faltered Matt. It's too late for the poor, for that poor soul, grunted the bodyguard. What about the doctor? I told you it's too late. You wanted to get your ears cleaned. You want to get your ears cleaned? Tamlin hoisted himself back into the saddle and ordered the horse to go on. Matt looked back, tears stinging at his eyes. The man had quickly um, hidden, um, was quickly hidden by the poppy plants. Why was it too late? Matt wondered. The man must be terribly hot, lying as, as, as he was in the full sun. Why couldn't they stop and give him water? Matt knew they had water. He could hear it sloshing in Tim Lynn's backpack. We could go back, Matt began again. Damn it, roared the bodyguard. He halted the horse and sat for a moment, breathing hard. Matt looked at the, at the, at the ground and wondered whether he had the nerve to jump off if Tam Len really lost his temper. I forget. Kids your age don't know anything, said Tam Len at last. The man is dead. Heat or lack of water killed him. The cleanup crews at the end of the day will find him. The horse moved on. Matt had even more questions now, but he was too sure uh, of Tamlin's temper to ask him. Why hadn't the man gone home when he was sick? Why hadn't the other workers helped him? Why was he l being left out there like a piece of trash? All the while, they were riding along a, a, a range of hills that bordered the fields. Now they turned off into a dry stream bed that led into the hills. Tamlin got down and led the horse under a cliff where it would have shade. Nearby was a, a trough and a pump, which um, he worked vigorously to bring up the water. The horse was sweating. Its eyes uh, watched the, 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 the trough, but it didn't move. Drink, said Tamlin. The horse trotted it forward and dipped its muzzle. It, it blew noisy bubbles as it drank raven, raven, ravenously. Well, well, we will walk the rest of the way. Can we take the horse? said Matt, looking doubtfully at the, at the steamed at the stream bed snaking into the hills. It wouldn't obey. It's programmed to stay on the farm. I don't understand. It's a safe horse, which means it's an, it has an implant in its head. It won't bolt or jump. It won't even drink unless you tell it to. Matt digested that idea for a moment. Not even if it's very thirsty, he said at last. It was thirsty just now, said Tamlin. If I hadn't told it to drink, it would have stood in front of the t trough until it died, he told. So stay, he told the horse. Shouldering a backpack, he, s he started up the dry stream. Matt scrambled after him. At first, the way wasn't difficult, but soon it blocked it was blocked by boulders that had that they had to climb. Matt wasn't used to exercise, and he quickly found himself out of breath. He didn't stop, though, because he was afraid Tam Lin uh, would leave him behind. Finally, the bodyguard heard him gasping and turned back. He hunted through the backpack. Here, drink some water, 
Have a bite of beef jerky too. That salt will do you good. I love beef jerky. Like almost any type of beef jerky. Matt devoured the beef jerky. It tasted wonderful. Not much further, laddie. You're, you're doing very well for a, for a, a hothouse plant. They came to a giant boulder that seemed to block the trail until Matt saw a round hole in the middle. It was worn smooth like a hole in a donut. Tamlin climbed through and reached back to help Matt. The scene on this on the other side was completely unexpected. Chris, and I might be mispronouncing this, Creosote bushes and Pala, Pala Verde trees framed a small, narrow valley. And in the center was a pool of water. At the far end, Matt saw an enormous grapevine sprawled over a, a man-made trellis. In the water itself, Matt saw shoals of, of little brown fish that darted away from his shadow. This is what you call an oasis, said Tamlin, throwing down his pack and taking out the food for the picnic. Not bad. Not bad, agreed Matt, accepting a sandwich. I found this place years ago when I started working for El Patron. The Alacarans don't know about it. If they did, they'd run a pipe in here, take out all the water. I hope I can count on you to keep the secret. Matt nodded, his mouth full of sandwich. Don't help Maria either. She can't help blabbing. Okay, said Matt, proud that Tamlin considered him responsible enough to keep a secret. I, bought, I brought you here for two reasons, said the bodyguard. One, because it's nice, and two, because I want to tell you a few things without being spied on. Matt looked up, surprised. You'd never know who's, who's listening to you in that house. You're too young to understand much, and I wouldn't say anything if you were a real boy. Tamlin tossed breadcrumbs into the pool. The little fish rose to the surface to feed. But you're a clone, he went on. You haven't got anyone to explain things to you. You're alone in a, re in, in a way real humans can't understand. Even orphans can look at pictures and say, That's my mom and that's my dad. Am I a machine? Matt blurted out. Machine? Oh no. Then how was I made? Temblin laughed. If you were a real boy, I would, I, I'd tell you to ask your big brother that, tr that tricky little question. Well, lad, the best way to describe it is this. A long, long time ago, some doctors took a piece of skin from El Patron. They froze it so it would keep. So it would keep. Then about eight years ago, they took a bit of that skin and grew it into a whole new El Patron. Only they had to start at the beginning with the baby. That was you. That was me? Asked Matt. It was. So I'm just a piece of skin? Now I've gone and upset you, said Tamlin. The skin was what you might call a photograph. All the information was there to grow a real copy. Skin, hair, bones, and, and a brain of, of, a, of a real man. You're exactly like El Patron when he was seven years old. Matt looked down at his shoes. That's all he was, a photograph. They just... They, they put that skin, that piece of skin, into a, a special kind of cow. You grew inside, and when that time came, you were born. Only, of course, you didn't have a father and mother. Tom said I was puked up by a cow, said Matt. Tom is a fi filthy little pustule, said Tamlin. And so is the rest of that family. If you quote me, I'll deny it. He brought out a bag of trail mix and passed it to Matt. To continue, being a clone, you're different, and a lot of people are afraid of you. They hate me, Matt said, simply. Some do. Tamlin stood up and stretched his um, big muscles. He paced back and forth on the sand where they were having their picnic. Oh, I had to make sure I was still recording. Um... He paced back and forth on the sand uh, where they were having their picnic. He hated to sit for, for long. But, but some love you. I'm speaking of Maria and, of course, Cecilia. And El Patron? And, well, El Patron's a special case. 
to be honest, the number of people who love you is small and the number of people who, who hate you is large. They can't get around the fact that you're a clone. It makes it hard to send you to school. I know, Matt thought bitterly of Maria. If she really loved him, she'd take him, take him with her and not care about what the other kids felt. El Patron insists that you can be educated and, and, and live as nearly as, as, as possible a normal life. The problem is no private teacher wants to teach a clone, and so the Alcarans got an Egypt. Matt was startled. He, he heard the word so often, mostly from Maria, he thought it was um, only a swear word like dum-dum or cootie face. An Egypt is a person or animal with an implant in its head, said Tamlin. Like the horse, said Matt, as a terrible thought occurred to him. Correct. Egypts can do only simple things. They pick fruit or sweep floors, um, as you've seen um, the harvest opium. The farmer, the farm workers are Egypts, cried Matt. That's why they work without resting until the foreman orders them to stop, and why they don't, don't drink water unless someone tells them to. Matt's thoughts were whirling. If the horse could stand there and die in front of a trough of water, then the man, the man, he said aloud, you, you're you bright as a button, lad, said Tamlin. The man we saw on the ground probably lagged behind the other workers and didn't hear the foreman tell them to stop. He might have worked all night getting thirsty and thirstier. Stop! shrilled Matt. He covered his ears. This was horrible. He didn't want to know anymore. Tam Lin was, was at his side at once. That's enough lessons for one day. We're on a picnic and we haven't had any fun yet. Come on. I'll show you a beehive and a coyote den. Everything lives around water in the desert. They spent the rest of the day exploring the burrows, the crevices, the hidden lairs of the secret valley. Tamlin might not have gone to a school for too long, but he knew a great deal about nature. He taught Matt to sit still and, and, and wait for things to come to him. He told him how to tell the mood of a beehive by its hum. He pointed out droppings and tracks and bone fragments. Finally, as the shadows began to fill up the oasis, Tamlin helped Matt climb through the hole in the rock and return to the horse. It was waiting exa exactly where they'd left it. Tamlin ordered it to take another drink before they set off. The fields were empty, and the long shadows of hills flowed across the land where they ended. The late afternoon sun made the poppies glow with a, with a golden light. They passed the dry field where the man's body was laying, but it was gone. Teacher was in Egypt said Matt, breaking the silence. She was one of the brighter ones, said Tamlin. Even so, she could only do, do even so, she could uh, do only one lesson over and over. Will she come back? No, the bodyguard sighed. They'll put her to work, mending curtains or peeling the potatoes. Let's talk about something more cheerful. Could you teach me, asked Matt. Tamlin let out a bellow of genuine laughter. I could if you wanted to learn how to break desk with karate chops. I reckon you're, you'll do your schooling off the TV. I'll be around to hang out, hang you out the window by your ankles if you don't study. So if you're still with me, um, tell me what you think. Are we on the path to have full-blown cloning um, so we can live longer lives tell me what you think in the comments hey thanks so much for uh, listening um i know i'm going through this book pretty slowly um and i know there's a fair amount of you guys who are who are listening to me so thank you again and we'll see you guys soon